Music, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome on stage our four string musicians. <laughs> All dressed up. They play real instruments, not digital instruments. They play real music, not for now digital music. We're going to produce some. Francisco, could you tell us something about musicians? Sure. I would just like to get started with another story. Um, and I'm just a big fan of storytelling. <laughs> so during a train ride um, to Prague uh, with Dalibor Karvai, who's the concertmaster of the Vienna Symphony Orchestra and an outstanding violin virtuoso, uh, which I luckily happened to manage. Um, we were on a train ride to Prague, and we were just talking with five hours of, of, of chatting, and he asked me, so what are, you, what are you up these days? And I was like, well, we still have three and a half hours, right? Yeah, so I started the topic NFTs, right? And uh, Dalibor looked at me, he didn't talk for two and a half hours, um, and, uh, and then he told me, I want to get in, let's do something together. So that, of course, for me, transformed in my mind as a kind of a strategy uh, to enter the conservative classical music world because I think that if a musician as Dalibor Karve, which represents such an important uh, Austrian orchestra, such as the Vienna Symphony Orchestra, believes in this technology, believes in NFTs, then, you know, we won. <laughs> so that's what I did. And then, um, based on that, my principal idea was to just, you know, create our first NFT, which would be recognizable by anyone in this planet. And I'm pretty much sure everyone is familiar with Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart's Eine kleine Nachtmusik, a little night music. So, what we did is we took that piece, we rearranged it, we changed, I don't know how many times we, we, we changed and, and yeah, we had many different opinions, we got feedback, we changed it again and so on for many months and then we came up with the final version, which we recorded in a studio and um, now I'm going to explain to you um, shortly how are the instruments represented in the artwork, in the visual artwork. So. This part represents the first violin. This part represents the second violin. That's the third part representing the viola. And the fourth part representing the violoncello. And those are the four stems Achilles was talking before. So the stems are represented by four instruments of the quartet. And there are five variations per stem, meaning each instrument plays five variations. That's variation number zero. Just let me get back to variation number zero. It's represented by trees. Why? Because the variation zero is the original one. When we start doing Mozart bees, I came up with the idea, I would like to visualize or illustrate the evolution of classical music, or at least the, my personal perception of classical music. So this is how I picture This is the classical piece. It's digitalized. That's why it's not looking really uh, natural, but digital with all colors and all effects. This is the variation number one, which is an alternative to the original variation. And there are some small monoliths coming up, but still the trees are dominant, right? Then in the second variation, we have already same height of the trees and same height of the monoliths. Then we have the variation number three, which are dominantly uh, illustrated by monoliths, purely, and smaller pieces of trees. And then we have the most modern variation of all, which is strictly represented by big monoliths, by massive monoliths. So what does this represent? This represents the evolution, or my perception of classical music, as I said before, and it's starting with a very classical picture, which are the trees, and evolving into something completely modern and maybe even abstract, which are, in this case, the monoliths.
Can I ask you a question for Please. this? So when you go back to variation number three, yeah. we see here two monoliths for each instrument. Do I get that right? It's there are two monoliths per instrument. Per instrument. And right. when you go on variation four, yeah. it's just one monolith. Yes. Is that correct? Why is yes. that? Because it's a big, massive monolith. Uh, mankind actually explained that in the video. That's the perception what what, what Stanley Kubrick had uh, had in the in the yes, 2001. Yes, the, the black monolith yeah. where you would so hear music of Ligeti in yeah, that case. Exactly. So yes. that's the one monolith presenting okay. the Very future. Good. You know. So. Mm -hmm. So when it's at the highest level of variation, the monolith is single. Exactly. Okay. So what allows this when we are creating? We have a string quartet with four musicians, and we have five variations per instrument. These allow us to create. 625 unique combination. So that's, I think it's pretty amazing, right? You can make 625 combinations just by playing out the different variations. And one combination exists as a single NFT. Each of them is a single NFT. Each of them and can be purchased and we will yes. talk later about it how. Okay. Yes. So that's the um, big amazing thing. And I think enough talk, let's get to live music. So what are we going to listen right now? Because you may have noticed that the musicians... Hello. No, no, no. No, not, not now. <laughs> you may have noticed that the musicians have been... Let me show you that, because actually we, you've done it very discreetly, but we've seen that in the afternoon. So what do you have actually here? You have something in your ear, is that correct? That everybody of you has. What do you hear there? Is it, what, the latest football call? No. <laughs> no. This. They're hearing Stuff. the click. So that you, you can play. Okay, very good. And then, as far as I can remember, your instruments are also connected. Is that right? No, you have just the microphone in front of you. So you are going to perform, let's be clear here, not right away the original Eine kleine Nachtmusik. We're going to listen to that later. But they are already performing the first NFT, yes. as far as I could tell. Well, now we're going to perform some Ex, um, extracts from the from the from the Mozart beats because we don't want to reveal the whole piece. So what we're going to do is we're going to do just small samples for everyone to hear the difference of these combinations. And Wonderful. keep in mind, each of the 625 combinations just sounds different. Yes. So I would like to ask you the most natural one, the first one, the classical one, the original one. Everybody recognize this. This is Mozart's <laughs> Eine kleine Nachmusik. First movement, the parts, obviously not the whole part, this, they interrupted themselves, uh, would continue. But this is Mozart's original. Yes. No NFT, no nothing. So, yes. Beautiful plate, beautiful performance, but nothing exciting, right? So, let's get into the variation number. <laughs> well, it's Mozart. Two, two, so. two, two. two. <laughs> Nothing exciting for the crypto community. Yeah, okay, for the crypto. <laughs> so now what we're going to show is um, the variation number 222 two, two, standing for all instruments. And this variation, I might add, because yesterday on our uh, Twitter space came up, this is called by a technique which was not really um, common in, during Mozart's time, which is the pizzicato technique. And so what, when we rearranged Mozart beats, Eine kleine Nachmusik, uh, we thought, why not try pizzicato version?
So that was the second variation. <laughs> Don't get confused. They played the same bars as the first one. It sounded absolutely completely different. Now, let's try something more innovative. Let's just mix the variations. So the first violin will be playing variation number one. The second violin, the viola playing the variation number original, the zero one, and the cello will play the variation number two. Still without any alterated, modified distortions by computer. Francisco, this is why we're seeing the number one, zero, zero, one. These are the variations they're playing, right? Yes, exactly. Right. Yeah, the stem mixes. Yeah. yeah. So, please, thank you. <laughs> Wonderful. So that we get it right, we have four instruments. This is why we have four digits. Let's put it that exactly. way. Exactly. Okay. And yeah. the number in the digit is the variation they're playing. The so number of the variations. First uh, variation, first uh, instrument, which I think is violin, yeah. as far as I can remember, is playing variation one, then original, origin, and variation two. Exactly. And we have a maximum of four variations, exactly. and the total of the possible is 625. Right. That's correct. <laughs> Very happy that I got that. <laughs> yeah. So now we are going to try something new. We experimented by making uh, some little experiment. So we substitute our cellist this time. That's the variation number three for the cellist. And we substitute him by a MOOC synthesizer. It's getting quite trendy nowadays to go vintage a bit with the sounding of the, of, of the synthesizer sound. So here is how variation 1213 sounds like. So I'm sure that some of you or some conservative minds, um, with all the respect from my side as a classical musician, might think, what the hell are you guys doing, right? But um, to be honest to you, we are approaching a new target group. We're approaching millennials. We are approaching the crypto community. And we have to work our, our, our instruments, our, our, our ways, how to approach this new target group. So I'm not saying we're going to sell Mozart beats to um, average 70 plus um, music, classical music listener because probably he's going to laugh at us and he's like, you're destroying Mozart's piece. So, but this is not what we are doing. Again, we are trying to create something modern and to approach a new target group. So right now we're going to listen something a bit more crazy. And we're going to substitute the first violin by a variation created by echoing beats, therefore the name Mozart beats. And the violoncello will stay off once more. I'm so sorry, Milan.
<laughs> and uh, it's going to be again substituted by the MOOC, MOOC synthesizer. Please. to be substituted yeah. by whom, or in that case, I should say, probably sure. asked by what? Yes. <laughs> so we have created num variations number three and variation number four were created uh, by, by a computer software, um, adding effects, distortions, echoing beats, splittering effects, glittering. So a adding some kind of special effects which for my perception or in my perception represent a futuristic way how to so audio uh, digital effects what exactly. you would put in movie from the visual aspect right. in this case you would put it uh, right. in, in audio so now what we're going to do and i think i put the wrong slide but that's the next slide yes now we're going to do completely crazy and we're going to do something that everyone is going to stand up and just leave the room or maybe you will stay until the end and Enjoy the variation 4432 done strictly by computer. Lucas, please. <laughs> So Sounds I hope, weird. Yes. <laughs> so I hope you could see that this is a variation, a combination, a stem mix made purely by huge monoliths, by massive monoliths. And so the sound, it's the most futuristic, futuristic sound you can get within the piece Mozart beats. That doesn't mean that all 625 variations will sound like that, of course, but this is the most futuristic one. And maybe, maybe some of us will say, hey, Maybe this in 150 years is going to be a groundbreaking moment, and maybe this Mozart bit piece was kind of a milestone within the evolution of classical music. But it's 2021, we are in the capital city of music in Vienna, and we want to keep it for now as it is beautiful and classic. <laughs> 